There is no shortage of videos that hit you with subjective tactics to get better at CSGO, but here are 10 tips that are scientifically proven to help you improve your game. My name is Brayden and welcome to Valve Guides. Trade your skins easily and quickly on swap.gg. First, log in through Steam, set up your trade URL in the settings, then simply select the skins that you want to trade and click the trade button. Then all you have to do is accept the trade offer and enjoy playing with your new skins. It's not only possible to trade skins on swap.gg, but users can also add funds with real money to use in their trades. You can also purchase items directly by clicking the buy items button for instant skin purchases. Make sure to check out swap.gg with the link in the description below. The most common form of giving tips is to recite what has worked for somebody personally, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, the basis of this video is going to be tips that can be universally applied to anybody's game, no matter what level of play you are at. These tips were all researched and based from peer-reviewed journals and papers, doctors, or directly apply the scientific method. As a warning, we are not saying that you need to do all of these methods, but if you want to reach that next level, these are the best proven methods of getting better that we could find. We hope after this video that you can nail down some really beneficial fundamentals that can be applied to any level of play. So let's get into it. Number 10, hand-eye coordination. Hand-eye coordination is among the most important of technical skills to be a competitor. If you are having trouble aiming, your hand-eye coordination may be very well to blame. Hand-eye coordination is not a natural talent for the vast majority of people. It has to be developed intentionally. Hand-eye coordination in a CSGO context can be broken down into four steps. Searching for a target, identifying what you see in here, the movement of your mouse required to aim at your target, and your final attack decision. According to a study done by the Journal of Neuroscience, the biggest factor in improving is training yourself to focus, not on an object or destination, but in the space in between. To practice this, you should use tools like Aim Booster and Quick Aim Maps. According to a study done by the scientists Safari Saherman and M. Ali, masked practice methods, or MPMs, and distributed practice methods, or DPMs, are the best methods. Masked practice is the repetition of a scientific exercise repeatedly without stopping. For example, if you played tennis and you wanted to improve hitting a topspin via MPM, you would hit that specific topspin 200 times without stopping. If you want to improve at transferring to other targets and headshotting them in CSGO, you should try adding 25 to 50 more reps of practice each week until you are happy with your results. Distributed practice method, or DPM, is going to be similar in nature, with one primary difference. Instead of brute forcing through an entire set, you divide it out into smaller intervals with timed breaks in between. For instance, if you wanted to shoot 200 headshots in your training, with MPM you would do all 200 in a row, but with DPM you would do something like 5 sets of 40 headshots with 3-5 to five minutes of rest in between rounds. DPM was proven to be more effective overall because of the rest time in between the rounds. It allows you to constantly re-engage the parietal reach region in your brain. A combination of these two methods is something worth trying as well. It would also be beneficial to try developing your hand-eye coordination outside on a more physical level, maybe dribbling a basketball, contour drawing, or tennis ball drills, as doing these drills along with general gaming drills from sites like Aim Booster will take your aim to a new level much faster. Number nine, finding your sensitivity scientifically. Developing your sensitivity and and being sure of it is one of the best ways to ensure that you can consistently improve your aim and be confident in it in competitive matches. Constantly varying your sensitivity with no real direction or idea of what is really better will stagnate your process or, if not, slow it down dramatically. Too many people copy pros when sensitivity is subjective to the development of motor skills, dexterity, and other physical factors. It is not a matter of just getting used to the higher sensitivity. The goal is to gain one-to-one -one mouse precision and tailor your sensitivity sensitivity, DPI, and window settings perfectly to you. We will leave a great video in the description that goes in depth on how to do this. Essentially, you first need to make sure that you enhance your pointer precision in the windows and mouse settings. Find your DPI, which for most people is around 800 when you're playing at native resolution and 400 when you're not. Set your pulling rate to the highest that your mouse allows and download the aimbots map from Steam Workshop. Open up the map, but tab out and go to the website we listed in the description. From there, input your base sensitivity 
sensitivity that you currently use and follow the instructions on the website until you find the perfect sensitivity for you. This is such a great way to find your sensitivity. Take time to set this up and you will notice your aim get immediately better. Not only that, but now you have removed a lot of the guesswork. This is just straight up efficient trial and error. It saves tremendous amounts of time and now you'll be playing at a sensitivity you know you can handle. Number eight, muscle memory and routine programming. Muscle memory is the main thing that separates a star player like Kenny S or Simple from you and I when it comes to their insane aiming and flicks. The reason they can hit those shots is the same reason a new player can just about hit everything but the enemy muscle memory. Muscle memory is the type of motor learning called procedural memory. Through the act of repetition, your brain cements that action into its neural pathways so that the movement becomes second nature. It's why you will never forget how to ride a bike after you learn it well. The only way to build muscle memory is to actually play the game, but it's important to play the correct way. Muscle memory doesn't discriminate between good and bad habits, so it's important to really sit down and research how to do something first and then apply it to your game, because if you don't, you will have to take extra time to unlearn a bad habit. For example, if you don't know how to flick, take some time to listen to and watch pro players as well as analysts break it down for you. Then train flicking in isolation for a couple of days before applying it to your game, so that when you do apply it into in-game situations, you have good fundamentals. You might not be happy with the immediate results, but this takes time. The amount of time it takes to get to a point where you should be confident in your ability to flick is different for everybody. According to research done by Pablo Selnick and John Hopkins, Hopkins University, you can improve the speed at which you develop muscle memory by constantly modifying the method of which you are practicing. If you were practicing flick shots, you would start with a stationary target and then the next day maybe have the target move side to side. Then the next day have him moving around corners until you have completely mastered the movement. If you play CSGO for three hours or more a day and are serious about improving, spend two to three weeks out of the month practicing a specific move in isolation. You will become so much better at it than you would if you were spending 100 to maybe 600 plus hours that it usually takes to get the basics down of a specific move in the standard way of training that most people use. Number seven, resetting bad aiming habits. Even players at the highest level have bad habits and our bad habits can linger for too long as we start to feel like we make up for them in other ways. If you actually want to get better though, you need to break those habits as quickly as possible and replace them with fundamentals. According to psychiatrist Judson Brewer, to change a bad habit, you first need to be cognitively aware of that bad habit. To do this, record your gameplay, take notes, and fully understand your bad habit. However, don't try to fully solve the issue yet. Finish your games and take a full day. When you come back, type out why you think you're not performing the movement properly. It could be as simple as something like, I don't know how to do this, or my wrist isn't comfortable with this movement. After that, research on YouTube, Reddit, and any other prominent information source to get clips. Find clips of the action being performed properly and contrast and compare them with your own recordings. After you can visibly see and recognize the problems with what you were doing, create a practice program for yourself. Using the tips we talked about with muscle memory, do at least 20 to 30 minutes of practicing that specific issue just before you play competitive. This will create good muscle memory to reset your previous habits. Be patient as relearning something you have done for hundreds or possibly thousands of hours takes time. If you're continuing to do this for a couple weeks, you will see improvement in the skill. It takes time though, be patient. Once you get used to that amount of time that it takes to improve, it doesn't feel as long as you start to solve more issues. Number six, limiting variables when aiming. Ask any scientist and they will tell you one of the most important things you can do when you're doing any research, or in this case, researching how to improve your own game, is to limit as many outside variables as you possibly can. This is equally important when training. Make sure everything you do while you are training is in a realistic yet controlled environment. As we stated before, constantly altering settings like your sensitivity, resolution, monitors, or equipment will only set you back and could possibly become detrimental to your aim training. This also applies to how you practice your aim, as altering your practice too much could also have detrimental effects on how fast you learn a new technique. Now this is not saying don't ever alter how you practice, you should always try to challenge yourself, but it's more important to master each level of practice before changing up how you do things. Pace yourself and record your results each week until you are sufficient to move on to the next level. Number five, fine motor skills for aiming. We hear a lot about fine motor skills when it comes to 
gaming as it's one of the key factors in having great aim and movement. One thing a lot of people don't mention, however, is that you can actually improve your fine motor skills pretty quickly if you work at it intentionally. Fine motor skill is the coordination of small muscles and movements within the fingers, hands, and the eyes. Like with almost every muscle in your body, you can develop these muscles with a short and simple training regimen. Simple things like writing, tracing images, speed typing, and other practices that involve using your fingers and small movements are great ways to improve your fine motor skills, and you will see results pretty quickly if you start working on them. This is especially important for left-handed people as well, as most left-handed people use the standard keyboard and mouse setup, which means your right hand is your aiming hand still. And because that's not your dominant hand, it's usually more underdeveloped when it comes to aiming. Now, of course, the best method to improve your fine motor skills in CSGO, of course, is practicing CSGO. But if you feel like you've plateaued and you want to get to the next level, try training those specific small muscles in your hand. YouTube and Reddit are going to be your best friends here in researching programs that work best for you. Number four, warming up. Just like the rest of your body, your hands have muscles, as we mentioned prior. And just like you would before any intense activity or sport, you should always warm up before you play CSGO competitively. Warming up for you could be as simple as just playing deathmatch, or if you're following the regimen like the previous tips, even better. Use this time to train and become alert. Get your mind warmed up too. The closer you get to joining a comp match, try to increase your fast twitch and precision training. This will help increase your focus on getting headshots back to back and ensure that your brain isn't stuck on looking for stationary targets if you're following the program we recommended before. If you don't have something that you are specifically working on training wise, lots of pros like Scream have their warm up routines public. That way you can copy them and adjust it to what works for you. Number three, hand exercises. This could be included with warming up and we've talked about a lot of hand oriented programs so far, but it deserves its own number. Hand stretches will increase the general range of motion of your hands and the motor speed of your fingers through increasing the blood flow and loosening the tendons in the hands. A five to 15 minute routine before you game will also help prevent things like carpal tunnel syndrome, which way more gamers have than you think. In fact, anybody that works at a desk. If you sit in front of a computer for more than two hours a day and you don't work on your wrists, you're at a big risk for carpal tunnel syndrome, but luckily it's preventable. But it also helps prevent other things like trigger finger and tennis elbow. On top of all of that, it will increase the strength and control within the hand itself, causing you to become more accurate and generally be more precise with your movements. We strongly recommend checking the link in the description and grabbing a routine from Dr. Levi Harrison. These will work a combination of your hands, wrists, and forearms, and we believe you will see major benefits in strength and speed. You'll thank yourself in five years for doing these exercises too. Gamers are at an extreme risk of having a lot of hand issues as we get older, believe it or not it is a major issue. It's a problem that can be prevented though. Number two, confidence and practice. I just tell myself and, you know, psych myself out that the next one is going in. And if I miss that one, the next one is going in. No one really affects Carmelo Anthony from scoring. One of the most well-researched topics in the world of sports and general performance is the effect that confidence, or the lack thereof, affects your ability to perform at a high level. CSGO players in particular have a lot of issues with confidence because one mistake could have a major effect on the outcome of a game. You will often hear people call this performance anxiety referred to as choking. Elise has no, he's missed the first shot oh, at the no. spray as well! Oh, no. Elise, no, not like this! A study done by the Journal of Sport and Exercise Psychology tested the effects and influences of anxiety in basketball players while shooting free throws. They noticed that when they told the test subject something to lower their self-esteem, they ended up shooting 30% less on average. From those results, they came to the conclusion that cognitive anxiety reduces the processing and storage capacity of the central executive and working memory, thereby reducing the attention resources available for the task at hand. Now, of course, the study was on basketball, but the the principle and feelings are by no means restricted to that game. If you ask any great shooter in basketball or CSGO, the most important part of shooting consistently is confidence. From Steph Curry to simple, the one thing that is consistent between great shooters is the belief in oneself. To get that confidence, you need to practice to the point where you can believe and your mechanics. Even when you weren't performing at a high level in a previous game, in basketball, this is often referred to as shooter's amnesia. You know, nothing before whatever shot I'm about to take. Uh, matters. It's uh, you gotta kind of block it out as best you can. Have a, uh, a sense of amnesia almost, and just rely on the repetitions and the work that you put into it. So you know it is frustrating in the moment when you you know 
know, some shot feels good and go in. Or over the course of a couple of games, you might not be shooting as well as you as you want to. But you worry about that in practice and you know in between the games. But if you let you can't let that kind of doubt creep in when you're out there on the floor, or else you're not going to be the player that you you want to be. Needless to say, if you want to shoot better. This is key, especially if you've been playing for a while. Number one, using trigger words. Dr. Hal Whistle is well known for his ability to develop consistent shooting ability in basketball players. One of the most renowned and widely used techniques is to create trigger words that you say all the time during practice to make your brain consciously correct itself. When you train shooting form along with a trigger word, you create a sort of reflex that works from a call and response method. This makes your brain essentially reset to whatever form you practiced in and take over for you, enhancing your muscle memory. A lot of people already do things like this mentally and just don't realize it, although they apply it to the wrong side of the spectrum. When you hit a no scope or flick, many people react with loud screams and screaming things like let's go, or if they get shot, some people will say things like tragic or <laughs> whatever like that. Whatever caused them to lose, they're going to repeat a lot of the same terminology. But if you can be aware and create your own dedicated trigger words, it becomes a lot easier to rely on your own muscle memory. Basketball players do this all the time. Some of the best times to enact a trigger word is when you whiff a shot or spray. You can use a trigger word to correct yourself and hopefully it will trigger your good practices from your fundamentals and muscle memory. Of course, you can use any words you want, but it's probably best to choose a word that connects with whatever action you're trying to achieve or one that's just not offensive because yeah. How many of these tips are new to you? Or were there any tips in this video that you know are good, but you just haven't gotten around to yet? That's the boat I'm usually in. If you try these tips, make sure to hit us up on Twitter with your results and we will shout you out in an upcoming video. My Twitter is at BradenVG as seen in the graphic below. I hope you guys learned a lot in this video. A lot of research went into it, not only on our part, but the part of everyone who contributed to the documents that we referenced. Make sure to use the description for more info on everything we talked about and thank you guys for sticking around until the end of the video stay amazing and i will see you in the next video